This video is just a quick micro benchmark of adding a bunch of elements into a linked list and an array list, and then getting a bunch of elements at random out of these linked lists and array lists. And we're going to measure the speed and how well they perform. So just as a review, the um, array list is essentially an array. It's a contiguous block of memory. A array list really is just a wrapper over array, and it automatically resizes and and recreates arrays that are bigger or smaller based on what you put into it or remove from them. Um, linked list, on the other hand, is a completely different data structure that is um, based on nodes where one node points to the next node and the node after that points to the next node. So if you want to actually traverse through this, say you want to get the third element, you have to find the first one and then the second one and then the third one. Whereas in an array, if you want to get the third element, you just go straight to index position 2, and you're there. So we're going to see, uh, in terms of speed, how this actually works in, um, in a real program. <clears throat> so in my micro benchmark, I have created a random, and I'm going to use this to randomly generate numbers. And I have, first of all, in my main method, I've got an array list that I've created and a linked list. And I just call it nums array list and nums linked list. They're integer types. And I have my size, it's going to be 1 million. So I'm going to put 1 million integers in here. <clears throat> now, the times to access, I'm only going to loop over this and try to grab one back out of it at random 1,000 times. And you'll see why in a second here. So in order to record how long this is going to take, I'm going to have to take timestamps. And I'm using system current time millis. So the smallest timestamp I can, or the smallest interval of time I can record is one millisecond, which is partially why I'm making the list one million elements long, because my computer's fast, as most modern computers are, and even doing millions of operations per second is very easy. Um, so. We're going to uh, first off create a loop that adds 1 million, that's this list size, it's going to add 1 million random integers into it. And this, this integer code's fairly simple. All it's doing is getting a next integer times um, 1,000 times 1,000 plus 1,000 times 1,000. So that'll give me uh, large numbers that are all fairly consistent in size. Um, and at the end of that, I'm taking another timestamp. So I've got a timestamp, I run the loop, and then I have a timestamp at the end. And I'm printing out, it took this long to populate, right? So the second thing I'm going to do is now I'm going to access these back again. So immediately, again, I'm going to put a timestamp, and I'm going to say, uh, here's the random access, time to access. Oh, you know what? Sorry, we've got to move this. So the problem is you have to be careful when you're doing these not to get print statements in the middle. Um, you really want to sandwich these timestamps in between the loop. And you don't want print statements because print statements are slow. Okay. So um, fortunately I did that down here too, so I didn't probably didn't spoil it that badly. Um, what I'm going to do though instead of doing both at once, I'm going to comment all this code out. And right here, I'm going to just run the array list code first. So we're going to see it's going to record the amount of time it takes to add a million elements into an array list. And then we're going to go through and randomly access integers. So that's what this random.nextn is with an integer as the argument. It gives an upper bound, so I can only get an integer of uh, the size of the list, and I'm only going to do that 1,000 times. So it'll randomly select something between 0 and uh, a million minus 1 as the index position, and it will do that 1,000 times. I'm not doing anything with it. I'm just calling the get and making sure I actually get that uh, method to access. So it, in the end, after I do this loop, I'm going to say it took um, the number of seconds at the end minus the number of seconds or milliseconds started. So I'll get some kind of time or some kind of total time here in milliseconds, and you'll see I'll get these for both. So let's run this. Uh, 
I'm just going to run as Java application. And you'll see the, the array list took this long to populate, 30 milliseconds, and the, um, the random access, 0 milliseconds. Obviously, we kind of could have expected that. Even if I jack it up to 10,000, it's going to be pretty quick. 3 milliseconds, right? So let's see if we can find something where we can record it. Maybe 5 milliseconds. Okay, 1 millisecond. Or 5,000 random accesses took 1 millisecond. And, and that's, again, because in an array list, you've got everything contiguous blocks of memory. And you can just call the index position, and the computer can really easily find it. So it doesn't take any time at all to do this. And you can see even the computer is very fast creating uh, 1 million entries into this array. And it's doing all of that resizing under the hood, and it's, it's doing um, all that automatically. All right, now let's look at the um, linked list. And the linked list code is essentially identical. The only difference is that in my implementation class, I have a linked list here. So just for sanity, we'll go through it. Um, we have the start of the linked list. We're recording that timestamp. So again, I've got a start and an end timestamp sandwiched around this loop. And my linked list is going to get 1 million random integers. Same as above. So we will call out how long it took to populate it. And you'll see the uh, random access time we're going to call it here. So in the next one, again, we're going to sandwich timestamps between the loop and we're going to try to grab uh, 5,000 random um, random index positions from the linked list. Now, think about this is going to be a little bit slower, so let's think about this because you have the head and you have the tail, but you don't really know what's in between, so you have to go from the head and then traverse through the elements until you get to them. And there are a million elements in this linked list, so we're going to see how long this will take. Um, so I have everything saved again. I'm going to go ahead and run this. And it's still running. The application is still running. 7.6 seconds. So 7,000 milliseconds, that's 7 seconds. So and even it's interesting, the linked list even took longer to populate. And that's probably because underneath, it's creating lots of objects. Now, the, the array list, it's just an array underneath, but the linked list, it has lots of objects down underneath that. And lots of memory is being used because all of these pointers, you're going to need all of these pointers pointing to each other, which are just more memory references and more, more memory to store. So this is just a, a micro benchmark of showing, doing a whole lot of operations on an array list, doing a whole lot of operations on a linked list, but they're implementing the same list interface, so you really couldn't tell the difference between them. Um, so anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Hope this was interesting. You can see if you're doing a lot of random access, definitely don't use a linked list because it's very slow for that kind of thing. Thanks for watching. Bye.